I remember one night at Elaine's, uh, some, you know, some woman was sort of fawning all over Lewis and, and um, hanging on his every word. And um, she was very attractive and looked like she might have been a model. And then at some point during the evening, she realized that he was the editor of Harper's and not Harper's Bazaar. And her interest in him sort of waned immediately. Lewis really believes in a community of readers, in cultivating a sense of community around the magazine. So that if you're reading Harper's, you really feel like you're having a conversation. You're having a conversation with smart people who care a lot and think a lot about the, the issues of the time. And you also feel a shared sensibility. And, and as, as a reader, that is incredibly intoxicating. The other thing to remember about Lewis is that he's one of the great innovators in the history of magazine journalism. Most people talk about his writing, uh, but not very many people talk about his, in, his inventiveness. Uh, the, it's, you have to know a little bit about the history of Harper's Magazine to realize how radical an innovation the new format was in 1984. He understood early on that people's attention spans were not what they used to be and he tried to make the magazine more accessible. He put a, a very, very refined and focused uh, stamp on the various departments, the reading section, the annotation. His invention of the Harper's Index has been widely imitated, probably the most imitated magazine form ever. I remember once there was a, a factual error in, in very near the end of the piece and you know I showed it to Lewis and uh, dreading a little bit and he uh, and he counted the number of words of this this segment that had to come out it was like 26 words and he sat there and just in front of me wrote this beautiful sentence of ex the exact same length that just fit into the final galley. And it was just artful, the thing that he inserted in was the exact right space. Uh, it was like a magic trick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he had a lot of those. And, he had, and there were little names for them. He had uh, the judo move is something we still talk about at the magazine. And the judo move is, is when you, you, you look at a, a paragraph that's just, it, for all intents and purposes, has been ruined. There's something wrong with it. And Lewis would look at it. Sometimes he'd look at it for 10 minutes. And then finally, he would change one word in the paragraph. It'd be fine. You know, he was there for a, a long, long time. And, you know, 25 or 30 years or whatever it was. But that's, that's uh, eons in, in editor's years. And, and, you know, with very limited resources, he made that magazine, uh, you know, an important part of the, the intellectual agenda. He's always resisted falling into the trap of what it is that... He, he or you know an American or a writer or an editor or someone in the media is supposed to believe you know and I think he's resisted those um, pitfalls uh, on the right and he's resisted them on the left as well I mean he is an uncategorizable thinker I think Lewis is the kind of person who lights candles against the dark and uh, he's his own firewall he's his own bonfire he's a uh, He's just got a magnificent mind and turn of phrase. He's a wonderful writer. What else can I say? He's a star and a sex symbol. <laughs> I was writing a story for Harper's Magazine. Harper's Magazine? I have a picture of Lewis Lapham on my binder. Wow.